Tonight, HBO for cord cutters, small drones are legal, and Samsung's new music streaming service. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 39 for Friday, March 7th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to 50-plus job boards with one click. Try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. And hello and welcome back. I am Jason Howell. Let's get right into the tech feed. So first up, speaking at the Morgan Stanley Technology Media and Telecom Conference this weekend, or sorry, this week, HBO, so I've got the weekend on my mind, HBO CEO Richard Plepler said that the network is ready to transition to a broadband delivered distribution model, which could see HBO Go as an independent subscription option for cord cutters. HBO's traditional model still generates a huge profit. Last year, HBO signed up 2 million new subscribers, but with Dish Network and DirecTV both signing broadband a la carte agreements with Disney this week, more companies seem to be gearing up for an eventual industry shakeup. New data from market research firm Comscore, which regularly surveys over 30,000 mobile subscribers in the U.S., says 159.8 million Americans owned smartphones in January, up 7% since October. Apple is in first place with 41.6% share of the smartphone OEM market, though Samsung has hit a new high at 26.7%, routing out the top five were LG, Motorola, and HTC. Now on the platform side, Google's Android still leads over Apple's iOS, though it slipped half a percentage point at the start of the year. In third place is Microsoft's Windows Phone, followed by BlackBerry and Symbian. All right, everyone, man your drones. At least for the time being, commercial drones are legal to fly in the U.S. skies. Last night, a federal judge dismissed the Federal Aviation Administration's case against the first and only person fined for drone piloting. The FAA tried to fine 29-year-old Rafael Perker $10,000 for using a small remote-controlled craft to shoot a commercial at the University of Virginia. Patrick Garati, a judge with the National Transportation Safety Board, ruled that, quote, there was no enforceable FAA rule or regulation applicable to model aircraft or for classifying model aircraft as drones. For now, it appears to be legal for drones to fly at low altitudes under 400 feet as part of a business. The FAA does plan to have new rules in place for small drones by the end of the year. This ruling does not affect larger drones that share airspace with helicopters and planes. So there you go. All right, so coming up, what Google CEO Eric Schmidt says about the security of your data. And up next, I will be joined by Alex Wilhelm from TechCrunch to talk about Samsung's new music streaming service. But first, are you hiring? Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? With so many job boards, who knows which one will produce the best talent? And if you want to fill that position fast with the perfect candidate, you need to post your job on all the top job sites. Now you can. With ZipRecruiter.com, you post to 50 plus job sites at once with a single click. ZipRecruiter also posts your job on social networks like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Google+. ZipRecruiter will add your company logo and colors to make your job pages an extension of your business. You can add unlimited users to your account, create an instant job page on your website, and include a company careers page to use as a careers link. Post once and watch the qualified candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface. ZipRecruiter.com will automatically highlight the best candidates. You screen them, rate them, then hire the right person fast. So try ZipRecruiter and you can find out uh, why they've been used by over 100,000 businesses. Right now, our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. And we thank ZipRecruiter for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, so joining me right now is Alex Wilhelm, tech reporter at TechCrunch. Alex, thank you so much for being here. 
It's fantastic to be here. How's it going? Awesome. So far, so good. Uh, we're almost at the weekend, so it's about to be amen, even better. Amen to that. It's about time, too. This week has been insane. I'm it done. has. It's crazy news week. Uh, what we've got on, on tap today is a little discussion around music streaming services. We actually just had some uh, interesting news break a little bit ago. First up, Samsung uh, unveiled their own streaming radio app. It's called, strangely, uh, Milk Music. And it's distributed via Google's Play Store for ga uh, Samsung Galaxy owners only. What would you say Samsung is doing with Milk Music that makes it kind of stand out among other similar services? Well, I'd say the most important thing about Milk itself is that it's free, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's an offering to specific customers of a specific OEM to have a free thing. So if you're building an Android handset, you have to differentiate it somehow. You're still needing now, you know, it's an Android device. But if you staple, you know, on top of it, this music service, it sets your Android devices apart from others. Uh, make it free, Samsung can take the loss uh, or the, basically the payments they're going to pay to in royalties. So it's a cool way for Samsung to make its devices more attractive to the average consumer. Yeah, but still, yeah, the the key there, of course, being locked to Samsung devices. So it's Precisely. not for everybody. It's just for Samsung. So we have Samsung's locked down approach uh, in that regard. Then on the other hand, we have Beats Music, another newcomer relatively to the scene. They've just announced that they've made their API public, allowing developers to integrate their service into their own products, similar to what Spotify and Audio have done. How critical is this kind of developer access to the success of these kinds of services? Well, I think for Beats, if they want to become as pervasive and popular as, you know, RDO and Spotify, they're going to have to find integration points. And so for that, you're going to have to have developer access. What I'm kind of encouraged by is how young Beats is compared to how long it's taken them to do this. So they didn't yeah. wait around. They did this rather quickly. So I think that points to kind of uh, competence of their team and perhaps a forward-looking perspective that will allow them to more quickly accrete market share than we otherwise expected. Um, but again, it's very new. For, it's very, Beats is very young. So I think it's a little early to say they're going to succeed or fail. But I think this is a good step in the right direction. Absolutely. I would completely agree. Now, we've seen a ton of similar services to date. No signs of slowing down, obviously. Are we reaching a crit critical mass? Is it uh, more the merrier or are we kind of getting a little too cluttered with music streaming services at this point? Well, I mean, it's great for us. Mm -hmm. We have endless options, and the more competition there is, the lower the prices will be, and the better the service will become. Uh, but I think if you're trying to go out there right now and build a new music service, you have to either have, one, a very specific value proposition, or two, a lot of money. I mean, Amazon sells music, Google sells music, Microsoft sells music, Facebook will eventually sell music. I mean, I mean, everyone does this. And so you have to come in with a very specific value proposition. Uh, and that's why the Samsung Milk service is interesting, because it is free, and that's a different price point than most other major services. But I think we'll see more innovation uh, and more consumer victories in terms of what we get. But in the end of the day, we're still just selling music. And that's a pretty fundamental and kind of normal thing. So I'm not quite sure everyone will still be alive in five years. Yeah, I mean, that, that, and that leads right into my next question is, oh, you know, kind of kind of about the artists, like, you know, all along with these services, it's about the services making money. And then the, the perception is, OK, but the artists aren't aren't happy. If you had to guess what the landscape is going to look like two years, five years from now, uh, just in the near term future, what are we going to see? Are we going to see these services finally kind of come around and make everybody happy? Are we going to see less of them because the, the fad's going to die off? What do you think? Well, no one's ever happy in music, but yeah, no, matter, no matter what you build, if the consumers are pissed off, the artists are pissed off, the labels are mad. Someone's always very unhappy. But what I'd like to see, if I got to kind of pick, uh, would be a closer connection between the actual service and the artist with less in between. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, you know, Pandora pays out something like 85% of its revenue uh, in royalties to uh, companies, but artists complain they don't get a dime of that. So the money is going somewhere, but just not landing in, this, in the pockets of the artists. So I think it would be encouraging over time to see different deals, perhaps, you know, one-off deals on a per-band basis with things like Spotify and Pandora, Beats, Milk, whatever, in which the revenues were more directly tied to the artist's pocketbook. Um, I don't know how long it would take to get there. I think there's a lot of contracts and lawyers in the way, but that would be a way, I think, to mature the industry and make it more palatable to all parties, except, of course, to labels. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good point. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me, Alex. Really course, appreciate course. you coming on today. Where can people uh, follow you and your work online? Uh, over at TechCrunch, which I'm sure people have heard of. And uh, I'm on Twitter at uh, just at Alex. So come say hi. That was, uh, that was a pretty easy Twitter name there. You, uh, you lucked out with that one. Uh, bought it off a guy in Mexico in 2007, I think. Oh, okay. That's a different story. <laughs> I, it totally is. And I want to I hear more about that. We'll talk offline. All right. Thanks again, Alex. <laughs> All right, and finally, speaking at a panel at the South by Southwest Interactive Conference in Austin, Texas today, Google Executive Chairman Eric Schmidt said that the company is, quote, pretty sure, unquote, your data is safe, uh, citing an updated encryption process Google has implemented to keep information secure. However, Schmidt also warned that once something goes online, it never really goes away. He said, quote, information is very powerful, 
It can be used and misused, and you have to respect that, end quote. Very, very true, Eric Schmidt. That is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us, of course, at TN2 at twit.tv. I'm Jason Howell. Thanks so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.